Congregational Church of the UCC. I'm glad to see you all this morning. We're glad to welcome those of you who will join us online. Uh, my name is Pastor Liz DeWeese. I am, uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm just really glad that we can share and worship together this morning. So welcome. No matter who you are or where you are on your journey in faith, you are welcome here. And we hope uh, that at Brookmead we can create a space for you where you feel like you belong. That is what we're working to do. And if you've got feedback about how we can do better, we always welcome that as well. So thank you. Uh, this morning is a special Sunday. It's Palm Sunday when we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And so this morning, whenever we, everybody's got a palm branch, or most of us do, if you chose to take one, on uh, whenever we hear the word Hosanna, it's like the magic word. We all get a, we're all gonna wave our palm, all right? So whenever we say or hear the word Hosanna, we'll wave our palm this morning. Hosanna, which means save us. Yeah, excellent, excellent, very good practice. Okay, um, as we continue to prepare our hearts and minds at, uh, for this worship experience, I invite you to take a moment to settle your brain, to invite intrusive thoughts to wait someplace else, to invite um, distractions to wait for you until after you're done, but to invite anything that is a part of your whole self to be a part of this worship experience so that you come to the community and to God as your whole self ready to receive whatever is here for you, ready to share whatever you need to share, and ready to, when we are complete with this moment, with this experience, take with you what you need so that you can meet those things again, those distractions, those intrusive thoughts, this time with having had the experience of worship together. Let's take just a moment to breathe together, will we? and released. As you're able and as you choose to, I invite you to rise in your own fashion for our call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna! Let us worship the one worthy to be praised. And now let us all sing the, the hymn, uh, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 216 in your hymnal. God of grace, your word is my song. 
There is a melody that we long to sing, the refrain that we pray will be stuck in our heads. So as we return to Scripture once more, we pray that you would allow us to sing into this song. Allow us to hear the truth in between the words. Allow the cries of the crowds to stand us to feel like our own. With open hearts and open ears, we pray. Amen. I invite you to receive the peace of Christ, to know that Christ's peace is here among us and it is here for you. It belongs to you. But it is not just yours to hold and to keep to yourself, it is yours to share with our community. And so this morning, as you are able and as you choose to, I invite you to share peace with those in our community. I invite you to um, Take the care that you need in touching or choosing not to touch, that is up to you, but to share peace with one another as we are here together in community. Let us share peace. Well, each Sunday we like to make sure everyone knows what's happening in the life of the church, and so we include um, a calendar of events as well as a description of events that's a different color. This morning it's green for Palm Sunday. Um, and uh, there are uh, there will be a garden dedication planning meeting on Zoom at 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, some people have received that invitation. If you have not and you would like to participate in planning the worship service, just reach out to me. I'll be glad to send you the Zoom link. I'm, we're happy to have as many people who want to participate in that. So we're going to have two meetings um, for the garden dedication planning 
Yes, um, for that service planning. Uh, we'll have a meeting on that uh, Tuesday and then a little bit later in April. Um, next week is Easter, so come for all of the fun things we'll be doing together. Yay! Um, but before that, don't forget, we have a Monday Thursday service this Thursday. We'll have a potluck dinner at 6 o'clock, and we'll start the worship at 6.30. We're doing that together with Holy Trinity um, uh, Community Church. Um, and they'll be joining us both for dinner and as part of the service, we'll join together. Um, it is not a traditional tenebrae. It's also not a traditional seder, and it's not a traditional um, stations of the cross. But it might be a mixture of all three of those kinds of things. So <laughs> we hope you'll come and enjoy. Um, we'll, we'll continue to follow Peter uh, through that evening and, and see how that helps us connect to the experience. So. I uh, hope you'll come for that. Um, and as I said, Easter is next Sunday. We've got a sunrise service, a potluck breakfast, a uh, brunch, uh, or our traditional worship service, and an Easter egg hunt for a little kids. Well, so good morning. How are you guys? I'm glad to see you. This morning is a special day called Palm Sunday. And we call it that because... Um, Jesus had a special day when he came into Jerusalem, which is the big city where near where he lived. Okay, I lost him. All right. There it is. Okay, cool. So he had he went into the city, and when he went into the city, everybody was so excited to see Jesus. They were so excited that you know what they did. They took down branches from the tree and they waved the branches in the air. Can you guys wave your branches in the air? They waved the branches in the air and they shouted something. They shouted a Hebrew word that that's, uh, is Hosanna. Can you guys say Hosanna? Hosanna. 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 That's right. Hosanna. And Hosanna means save us. You see, the people were afraid because their king was kind of mean. He wasn't really great. Um, and they were afraid of him, and they were suffering. They were, they were very hungry, and they were sad a lot. And when they saw Jesus, they said, he's going to save us. And so they shouted, Hosanna, save us. And they waved their branches in the air, and they celebrated because Jesus was coming to town. Will you guys pray with me? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for Jesus coming to town. Thank you for the word Hosanna that helps us to know that we can that Jesus will help us. And thank you for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Let's go. See you later. The Gospel of John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says the disciples did not understand what was happening. That's in verse 16. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade missing our chance to sing. Not really sure why we're standing on the side, but still we miss it. Sometimes we're just oblivious, right? We don't see it at all. That is why we need the prayer of confession. Because life happens so fast, and without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. So let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. <clears throat> Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your grace. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall, 
Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could leave the parade, but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are our songs to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. And then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Church, no matter where you are on the parade route, whether you are waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus marched for you. Jesus' love, his striving for justice and mercy, it was for you. You are included in this story and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to sing. For Jesus Christ loved you yesterday, Jesus Christ loves you today, and Jesus Christ will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. So go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Amen? Amen. Today's scripture reading is John 12, 12 to 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the Passover feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they got palm branches and went up to meet him. They shouted joyfully, Hosanna! <laughs> Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God the ruler of Israel. Jesus rode in, sitting upon a donkey, in accord with scripture. Fear not, O people of Zion. Your ruler comes to you sitting on a donkey's colt. At the time, the disciples didn't understand all this, but after Jesus was glorified, they recalled that the people had done to him precisely what had been written about him. God is still speaking. Yes, be to God. God. And now a poem. We summon every ounce of courage. We give ourselves pep talks and we call our friends. We dig deep within. We practice the words out loud, rolling them around in our mouths, imagining the response. We deal out every what if card our brain holds on to and spend absurd amounts of time imagining all the ways it could go wrong. And then finally, blessedly, we say it. I love you. To speak the truth of your heart takes courage. It always has. But please, summon your courage. Join the parade and speak with conviction. For God has been saying to the world since day one, I love you. What is your response? Pray with me. Abba God, hold us close this week as we travel the lonesome valley of Holy Week. Show us the whole truth and teach us again how to become anew through our reflection, our confession, and our hope for your promise. And may this word be a blessing to all who receive it. Amen. My parents wanted me to understand my privilege and ways I could use it to lift others from a very early age. I'm not sure we had that language when I was a child, 
not sure we were talking about privilege when I was little. But when I look back, that is what I was learning and beginning to understand. I grew up near Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in Marietta, which is one of the more affluent uh, suburbs. Itchy face. But, I, I, but, but still near Atlanta. I, I grew up a Braves fan, if, if that tells you anything. Back when uh, Dale Murphy played for them, <laughs> it was a long time ago. They weren't very good back then. <laughs> But you could get tickets for five dollars, so you know it was it was a great way to spend an afternoon. My mama, when I was little, was my Girl Scout leader when I was brownie. So that's that's the younger girls, right? Um, and we learned about Savannah, and we learned about Julie Gordon Lowe, and we went on a trip, and we and I learned all kinds of things as a Girl Scout when I was little. But one of the things that we learned living in Georgia was we learned about the Cherokee people. And we learned about the Trail of Tears. And we began to understand how we were a part of that story and how we could be a part of changing the future of that story. I remember arriving to attend uh, a Martin Luther King Jr. parade when I was a kid in Atlanta. That was pretty amazing for a little one, um, for me. <laughs> We uh, helped uh, a couple of years. We helped to prepare and serve Thanksgiving dinner to the unhoused people of Atlanta with Reverend Hosea Williams, who was somebody who had marched with and was a team with uh, Dr. King. I remember visiting the King Center, and all of that happened before I was 12 years old. I've learned a lot about racism and injustice, but I still had a lot, still have a lot, to learn about racism and injustice. The first time I remember, I can visibly imagine myself attending a protest. I was a teenager. Um, we lived in Madisonville, Kentucky, which is a small city in Western Kentucky, but in Western Kentucky, a city is bigger than everything else around it. So everybody thought we were the big city, but having moved there from Marietta, Georgia, I thought we lived in a tiny little town. <laughs> My mom and I went to the city hall with other women, and we held up signs, and we marched in a circle in front of the city hall, um, calling attention to a woman's right to choose. This was risky business for the wife of a minister of one of the five biggest churches in town and his daughter, and her daughter. Um, I remember feeling both proud and a little nervous, anxious about people who might want to cause us harm because of our bold act of speaking out on the town square. But mostly I felt proud to stand and use my voice for the empowerment of women's health care. <laughs> Superhero pose. <laughs> As an adult, when I have attended protests, I've had a different level of nervousness. Partly because our culture has changed. As the divisions in our culture continue to deepen and widen and as the level of violence continues to feel more imminent. <clears throat> more present in our culture in a way than it was when I was a teenager. I have had a different, I've had different feelings about attending protests. There were some in Arizona that I skipped because I was afraid. I was afraid that there might be violence. Um, Don and I talked about it and we did not take the children to protests. Then there was the Sunday that I was standing in the chancel in the pulpit area when a man came into our worship, worship space and as I was preaching, he started yelling back at me. Um, and I couldn't tell if he was a person who intended violence or just a person who needed to vent somewhere and our church got to be the lucky one that morning 
or someone who needed me mental health assistance. I, I couldn't tell from the pulpit. I couldn't tell who this person was or what his intentions were. What I knew is that I was incredibly uncomfortable. I was in also incredibly grateful for the, deep, the worship leader that morning who also was um, an elder and also was a former Marine and built like, who, who was able to use his voice very well to, to help calm things. But I remember um, when I stepped down from my sermon because of that chancel area, I usually preached from behind the communion table because it was easier for me to see people there. Um, and we didn't have a chair in the chancel area for me to sit in, so I would sit on the front row. So when I came back down and sat in the front row, I sat down and then my mind started to move because as long as I was preaching, I was working and focused and not really engaging the behavior, but once I sat down, my mind started to wonder, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, what if he has a gun? As an adult attending a protest, I used to fear arrest, even thought, and I, I am quite prayerful about, even though I'm quite prayerful about what it would mean to be arrested for nonviolent social action, and I continue to consider whether that is something I could or would do, since <clears throat> I'm a single mom now, am I, can I be the one who does that? But now I also fear violence, both from those who mean harm and from those who are supposed to protect and serve and wear uniforms. There is an unease in attending a protest. And yet, there is really, there's something really beautiful about a mass of people gathering together even in our fear, and choosing to stand and speak and walk anyway, to use our voices to speak to power, to join together, to not be one alone, but to be many, to use our voices to speak to power. When we sing together, there's something really magical about walking together and singing together and hearing as the as as the the voices kind of carry throughout the line of walking protesters and you can hear when they haven't caught up yet with the voices that are at the front that it's but if there's something about that when we shout together in the Capitol building and it echoes through the whole building, ooh, you can feel it. You can feel it not just in your, like, you can feel it in your bones. It's, it's powerful. And there's hope in those voices. A hope for a change from oppression and an imperial power to a movement through community power. On that day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the colt of a donkey, as scripture had foretold, the people heard he was coming and gathered their palm branches and greeted him and shouted for him and sang songs of loudest praise for him. They waved their palm branches. They laid them on the ground for him. You know, these pilgrims who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover journey, some of them, this would be their once-in-a-lifetime journey to Jerusalem to come to the temple where they could make their once-in-a-lifetime sacrifice so that they could be as in, in alignment with their faith. They were making this journey. These people were supposed to be shouting for Caesar that day. whose might could crush them all if they would defy him. 
But when they heard Jesus was coming, they defied Caesar and gathered to greet their hope and the representation of change that was there in their midst. Caesar's got a parade. He'll be fine. He won't miss us. I wonder what the disciples were feeling, though. I wonder what Peter was feeling. He's not named specifically in this scripture that we read this morning, but he's one of the disciples. And we've been following him this whole season. Peter, who was first amazed by an overwhelming catch of fish. Peter, who dropped everything in his life to follow Jesus. Peter, who walked on water and then clung to Jesus when he began to sink. Peter, who proclaimed faith that Jesus is the Messiah. Peter, who was told to get out of Jesus' way when he tried to silence Jesus' revelation of the plan to speak truth to power. Peter, who asked questions and learned about expansive grace. What was Peter feeling walking with the parade surrounding Jesus while people waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, save us. Was he excited to be with Jesus as the crowd was electric with hope? Was he anxious about the attention that they were calling to themselves and fearful about the potential violence? Was he hopeful that this parade into Jerusalem for Passover could actually be the turning moment when Jesus would become king of Jerusalem? Still not the plan. Scripture tells us the disciples didn't understand all of this at the time it was happening, but that when Jesus was in his glory, they were able to look back and see with fresh eyes what had been happening on this day the whole time. With awe, they were able to look back and see the act of justice it was for Jesus to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and begin his work to change the power structure of the empire. That was the plan. It was the work of the movement coming to bear upon the power structures, and it would change the world. It would also bring the full weight of the fear of those people in power to turn the crowd using that fear to silence Jesus' message of hope and ultimately to silence his voice. By the time the Passover was complete, Jesus would be would have been arrested. Sorry. I wrote it right. <laughs> I said it wrong. By the time the Passover was complete, Jesus would be arrested and tried. He would be handed over to Roman authorities who would hand him back to religious leaders, but ultimately carry carry out their act of fear against Jesus with shouting of hatred and jeering and degrading and torture. Jesus would be silenced and the people who loved him, the people who followed him and the people who believed in him would lose their hope and their voice and hide in a locked room for fear of those who killed their teacher. There are times in the life cycle of a movement when those who are active in the movement will feel overwhelmed and silenced by the sheer volume of fear-based power flexing by those who hold power. Can I get an amen? Amen. The movement will feel tired and disappointed. It will feel frustrated and hopeless. The movement will want to give up. Can I tell you how many times I've talked to people in the movement who want to give up? in Tennessee, who want to give up? How are we making any difference? How is it, how is it, how? What are we supposed to do? They just keep coming for more and more. The movement will want to give up. 
when we're feeling silenced, sometimes we need to pause in the silence. We need to breathe in the silence. We may need to cry in the silence, but we must never give up. Our faith teaches us that the silence is not the end. It is simply a pause, a break in the work, a break for the grief and for recharging. So in the silence, we will pause and we will breathe and we will cry, but we will lean towards hope that this church is not the end of the story. Amen? Amen. As we reflect together on the word today, I invite you to join me as we sing our hymn, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. concerns this morning, I invite you to join me as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we are grateful this morning and we ask that you would hear what we lift to you in this silence for a moment. We trust you, we believe in you, and have faith in you. We are grateful for all the ways that you have shown us your love. We ask, oh God, that you would hear everything that we have lifted. We know you've already heard it, that you've received it into your bosom, that you hold carefully and with strength our words to you. So we give thanks for the ways that we can celebrate joy and be lifted in our hope because joy reminds us of your blessings. And we give thanks for the ways that you are present in our struggles, in our fear and our worry, in our challenges and in our growing. 
We are grateful for you, O oh God. We ask your protection over those who do not have enough. We ask your protection over, over those who are vulnerable to the elements around them. We ask your protection for those who are victims of violence and hatred. We ask your protection over those who are struggling with their own challenges, with addiction and with mental health and with, with physical health. We pray, O oh God, that you would hear our prayers. As we lift all of this to you, O oh God, we pray for the way that we can follow you with hope, with courage, with justice and love in our hearts. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. We go to the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. Who challenged Rome's oppressive power with peaceful protest. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. Who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth. So even today, we will sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. The laying down of palm branches in the street is an expression of the hope of God among a desperate people. Today, we are invited to lay down our treasure as an outpouring of our gratitude for God's act of salvation in Jesus Christ. Let us give with shouts of Hosanna on our lips. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna.
sometimes we can be guilty on this holy week of starting at Palm Sunday and jumping all the way to Easter if we happen to miss Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday. Or... So I always think it's important that we start with triumphal entry, but find ourselves moving into the valley. And so, beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart. It is I. Be not afraid. You are called. You are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. So go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Amen. Amen.